Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 166 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with just Trevor at the moment. Damon is no going to bust his way in at some point. What'd you say? No Damon. <laughs> no Damon for the moment. Yeah. He's yeah. coming. He's just not here yet. <laughs> so, um, Which is fine. He he. Uh, Damon has a very busy weekend and we knew that. We, we've tried our best to accommodate, but you know, if he can't make it, he can't make it. Which... Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time, and um, we're not going to be upset about it, so hopefully you guys won't be upset about it. <laughs> well, and, and in that same vein, we we did say we were going to have Ziggy on the show uh, to give his review of the Star Cruiser. Um, that is rescheduled to next show because uh, we couldn't uh, work on schedules. Ziggy is located uh, far away from us and many hours uh, difference, so uh, we have to be very specific about the timing, and uh, unfortunately, the timing didn't work this uh, this week, so... We will get him on next week, but and I know he has a lot to say about Star Cruiser, and I know Damon has a lot of questions to ask him about Star Cruiser. So, yeah, and I'm so, sure you and, do and too, Trevor. Uh, so, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, it, it's, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, yeah, Damon Damon really wanted to be on here for it. So I, you know, I get why, um, you know, we we were trying to make it work this week, but it just it never, uh, or sometimes it just doesn't. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it doesn't help that, you know, we're dealing with three different time zones, right? Trying to coordinate between you, uh, us, and and oh, Italy. <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah, you know, you know I, I mean, you you guys know me. I'm pretty flexible. Yeah, you're like, pretty I'll, flexible. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll work around it. Uh, that's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, me too. But it's 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 more of uh, of Ziggy and, uh, you know, it's it's a challenge to get him. But we're going to get Ziggy back. And I think a lot of recent listeners, we haven't had him on quite a while in quite a while. So, uh, you know, some some of our new listeners probably have never even heard him on here. So, uh, yeah. And and I'm I'm looking forward to just yeah talking with Ziggy again because it has been so long like even has, outside yeah. of the Star Cruiser. <laughs> well, and I mean you know I've chatted with I chatted with him you know occasionally it just you know I haven't I haven't actually talked to him talked to him in a little while so it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. So, all right. So let's get let's get into listener questions then, and then Damon will join us uh, sometime soon here. Who yeah. knows? And um, and he'll miss this yeah. first question and be upset about it because I'm sure this would be the question he would want to answer. But knowing him, we'll just have to go back, right? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Lauren, if you were going on the Galactic Star, Star Cruiser and came up with a character to be play while on board, what would your character backstory be? And would you side with the Resistance or the First First Order? So, that's a good question. I like this. So, why, why don't you go first? Because you're... I, I'm curious what your answer will be. <laughs> I don't think I have a good answer to this because my Star Wars knowledge is like, you know... Chewbacca level like you know what I mean like I know okay. like I don't go deeper than the main characters with with Star Wars you know what I mean? so like I don't even know like what planet I would be from or you know like I don't I'm not into all that right so I would say that I think it would probably be more fun to be on the resistance side than the first order side so I'd probably choose resistance but that's just me yeah that that's kind of where my head is too I I definitely am more of a resistance than a first order fan um to what are you gonna do to with get your son in- though right your son is first order though right didn't you say no that? actually so so we we talked about this and he, he's not first order he is empire okay. so oh, so he likes okay. the old <laughs> empire and he likes all that he wasn't a fan of the first order so see, okay he so i guess he would actually end up being more of a defector or maybe okay, neutral yeah. i don't know <laughs> um yeah, I, so so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting and fun to to talk through that stuff. For me, I've always been a resistance fan. I've always been, um, you know, Rebel Alliance, whatever. Um, yeah, you know, you know, I I would be the one wanting to hang out with Chewie, um, for sure. But um, I I like the idea of, um, like it, it, in a lot of the stories, the, there's always those characters that, um, they they kind of they almost play both sides like like they they'll get in the middle of things but you know it looks like yeah. they're they're not like like somebody running a store but it's like they're they're smuggling stuff in the back 
or whatever, right? <laughs> so, I get it. so like yeah. they're running like a first order outpost, but they're doing smugglers stuff in the background. For exactly. The distance. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and seeming, seeming normal on the surface, but underneath, you know, will, will do whatever needs to be done for the resistance. So I, that would be the kind of backstory that I would like, not like, cause I, I think on the resistance, yeah, there, there's that, but then there's also people that are just like full in, like, you know, I'm flying a TIE fighter and, or I'm a Jedi or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't want to be that, or I, I wouldn't want to be that kind of character. I would be that, you know, the, the enabler, I guess would be sure, the best sure. way to put it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think there's some, some, uh, some positives to, to the dark side of these things. Cause they got like the nicer stuff, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. they got the yeah. nicer ships, they got the nicer places cleaner. to stay. Yeah. yeah it's a cleaner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, you're always threatened in your workplace by, you know, Kylo Ren or whatever, like you might choke you out or whatever if you do something stupid. But <laughs> but at the same time, at least you're not like in a dirt cave with like, you know, old equipment that's falling apart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's that. I just yeah, I think that's a little too stressful to, you know, <laughs> the, the Be fear other, of imminent yeah. death. From from your boss doesn't uh, doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> Constant fear of invisible forces uh, hurting you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reminded yeah. of the uh, the the SNL bit that of uh, where uh, they had oh, Kyler uh, as undercover boss. Adam, yeah, yeah, Adam yeah. Driver. Yeah, that was yeah. Good do it. <laughs> that's pretty, that's just what I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, but yeah, I I I don't I don't know. See, like I don't have this good backstory thing because I just like. I don't know like a lot of the planets and the, you know, like I wouldn't know where, where I'm from or, or anything like that. That's just not a part of my star Wars knowledge, you know? Yeah, that that's fair. I mean, it's the, the thing is, is I, I think a lot of people it's either you're on Tatooine or Hoth. <laughs> like can, I, can I be on the Chewbacca desert. planet? Can I be on the Chewbacca uh, planet? Uh, Kashyyyk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one. I'm going to be on that one. Yeah, I mean that that that's very jungly. I, I guess there is there is also uh, Naboo, which uh, I mean Naboo would be nice. It's it's yeah. a very uh, like um, tropical kind of planet. So okay. yeah, I mean there there's definitely you know I I think the thing is is saying you know what your backstory should be. You the the fun thing is is that you can kind of build that as you go. Like like you said, you know yeah, you yeah. you don't know a lot of the stuff, but if you actually sat down and you know thought about it and and that's kind of a, like I, I do like lauren's question here because you know if they if they had something like that where like i know that the, that the star cruiser they have like your itinerary but if they let you build your own backstory that affected that so like you could get yourself into a character um i think a lot of people would would probably think more about it than you realize like but like I said, a lot of those conversations don't come until like for me, it's because me and my son talk about it. It's not that I'm sitting there all, all day going like, you know, this is my star Wars universe kind of thing. It's, yeah, it's yeah. because of a conversation that, that I think about it. That, you know, like, really still on the first question. <laughs> well, uh, we were stretching it out because we, we, we were stretching it out. We thought you might want to answer this one. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course uh, okay. I was wrong. <laughs> well welcome welcome damon (laughs) yeah it's a busy day today yeah uh so let's go jason if you could change one thing about dvc just one but it could be anything one and two bedrooms of poly studios having washer dryers get rid of the new restrictions grand cali availability what would it be and why more restrictions more restrictions (laughs) yep resale doesn't get to do anything Resale gets to do nothing. R- resale can only stay where they bought. Wow, you, you know, you know, our sponsors are DVC Resale Market. Right? <laughs> Speaking of the dark side, geez, geez you know, <laughs> um, even but Damon, even if I have a direct contract and a resale contract, you can't use your resale contract to book anywhere except where you what? bought it at. No, yeah. no, I don't mm. like that at I all. I feel like that's going to come at some point. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Well, didn't it wasn't, wasn't it Derek that said that if they were going to do that, they would have done it already or something like that? I mean, did did we think that Riviera would be the way it is? No, but that's like a new resort that's being sold, right? Like, so they yeah. No, I'm saying is that I don't. I'm not going to be surprised if that's the way all new resorts are going forward. Oh yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I I don't see them retroactively doing it. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I don't know, uh, Trevor. Would you want one? Or, you want one and two bedrooms of Polly? Would that be a good thing to have? Mm. There's no two bedrooms of Polly. No, there. I know nothing there, about Polly. You can get lock offs, so you can combine two studios together. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. The 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 room selection at Polly is definitely not Wait. as good as the other resorts. Do you not have washer and dryers at all? Nope, uh, but we have. Uh, oh, dude, the, Polly stinks. It, it has. <laughs> we have a laundry room where it, you don't a have communal to laundry room. It is, yeah, yeah. That's nasty. Yeah, I never use it, but <laughs> yeah, I've never done laundry on vacation like that. That's just like I, yeah. I wouldn't. Have you you only have that. one kid. Well, that's true. Yeah, I guess. yeah. <laughs> what the thing that I actually would want is the um. The, they have the kitchenette. I would like a proper kitchen in the studios okay. like a full kitchen or just yeah. like a, a cookie baking kitchen like I, I i want a fridge i want a stove like yeah wait polly yeah. has no fridges no we have fridges but not uh it, it's Baby not fridges? a full kitchen it's yeah, yeah that's it's a mini kitchen fridges. yeah, yeah. mini fridges because it's a studio yeah yeah that's terrible i didn't realize <laughs> that that is terrible yeah again it it works for my family because, like you said, we, there's only one kid, sure. and we yeah. don't stay in the room long enough to care about it. <laughs> they they are yeah. big rooms, though, and they do have two bathrooms, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. there, there is that. That is true. I mean, I've stayed there once, but still, I just kind of forgot about that because my kids were younger. Now that they're older, I feel like, man, I need that big fridge. I mean, we literally probably have three gallons of milk. That's... We go, Yeah, if we go for like five days, that's like three gallons of milk, like big boy gallons. Yikes. So yeah, so so that's that's the only thing I would say is if if they had a full size kitchen that would uh, that would be the only thing that I would change. Yeah, I mean, I I would like to see. Uh, I mean, we've said this before. I want more lounges. Give me more benefits. Give me give me more things. Yeah, I I, I could say that too. I, I would lounge like more lounges. Park. A lounge in every park. Yep, that's the dream, right? That is the dream. That's 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 where I'm at with it because I, I think the rooms are fine. Like I don't. I don't really need to change anything r- about the rooms. I like the rooms. I'll, although I yeah. did just see, I saw an article now that the uh, Animal Kingdom rooms now have the interactive TVs that they're starting to do. Have okay. you seen those where it like says your name when you come in and like you can stream Disney That's Plus cool. to them and all sorts of stuff. So um, it's a lot more personalized. I saw that uh, they're slowly rolling. Like they have them at like Riviera and I th- one other resort and now they're at Animal Kingdom. So I'm sure. I, I wonder when I'm going to actually get to Riviera, to be honest with you. Now that I own points there, I probably should. Yeah, you should. Yeah. So b- before before we go any further, I, I keep forgetting. I, I had I've been having like Disney dreams. Maybe that must like mean that I'm I need to go or something. No. But <laughs> I had a funny. So so last night I was dreaming that there was from Haunted Mansion, right? If you remember, we kind of had talked about like this. Hey, there should be a restaurant that only certain oh, yeah. people can go to. So in this dream, what happened was there was like a, another path off a Haunted Mansion. And you were in like not a buggy style cart, but the same sort of thing. And it went underneath the haunted mansion, and it was way darker and scarier, right? It was like a little bit, like a scary ver, like a legit scary version. Yeah, like a legit scary version. But like, and what happened was is that when you were done, you ended up in a restaurant and had lunch there. I was like, that sounds I like like it. really I like awesome. It. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I, I, I do like that. that idea. I had another dream like two episodes ago, and I just forgot. You know, like, like you, oh, dude, I'm not going to forget this dream, right? And then, you know, <laughs> two hours later, you're like, oh, my goodness. I forgot. So this was one, though, like I said, I was like, oh, I got to write it down. So I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. But, yeah, it was a tunnel underneath the Haunted Mansion, and you went through. And that was it was long, too, for some reason. But I guess Haunted Mansion is kind of big. So it was super long, and then you ended up at, like, this restaurant. But it looked like it was, like – um a restaurant only for like a few families, right? Not like a huge place. Uh, it was, it was kind of cool though. Yeah. I have a recurring nightmare uh, that takes place at Disney parks, uh, a variety of different Disney parks where I lose my daughter in the crowd, like all the time have that nightmare. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. And, and I mean, she, you know, obviously this, uh, this next trip they're going to have in October is the first time that we're, she actually like could run away from me. You know what I mean? Before it was like, she could barely walk. So like she couldn't really go too far, but. I'm not going to go as far as doing one of the the leash backpacks with the kid, but you know. Did uh, did I ever tell you the the story of our our panic at uh, Animal Kingdom? Um, I think it was in 20 
17 when we went. <laughs> I mean, I would think with 166 episodes, you probably did, but we're old and we probably forgot. I forgot. So, so <laughs> speaking of that, that fear, that, that nightmare. So we were at uh, flame tree and I was going to, to pick up food and it was taking way longer than I thought. And so my wife was wondering what was going on. So she came to, to help me and she left our son at the table and he was, uh, he was about nine at the time. So, you know, she told me, you know, you know, stay here. Um, we, we were waiting for the food. We come back to the table and he's gone. Oh, and gosh. so we panicked, you know, you know, obviously we, we legitimately panicked. It turns out that, that my kid had a, a flash of responsibility and inspiration. He packed up all the stuff and he was coming to look for us. So, oh, so he wasn't lost. He was looking for us. And then all of a sudden he shows up right behind us and we're like, where did you go? And he's like, I was trying to find you guys. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we, we had that moment of fear and, you know, he, he wasn't panicked or he would, he wasn't panicked so much as that, that he was lost. He was like on a mission to find us. But nice. uh, yeah, we were the ones that were freaking out because, you know, parents with the lost children. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I, I like maybe subconsciously i'm worried about this because i keep having nightmares about it but like like awake me is doesn't feel that concerned about it especially since we're gonna have other people with us like there's gonna be right. a lot of people that can pay attention right and I, my daughter's also not the type to run away from us you know it's just not kind of her thing so i mean but who knows well, my, obviously my, if it's a reoccurring dream it bothers you it does right? yeah <laughs> it, deep down in my subconscious it's bothering me yeah <laughs> it, it's an irrational fear and you can't get rid of those <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly i i think it's actually because i also when i was a child got lost at disney so <laughs> um briefly it, d- it didn't end up like an episode of full house where you had a tea party and met all the characters no, unfortunately not unfortunately oh, not. no <laughs> too bad uh all right let's do allison's question yeah you want to read it trevor I, I uh know. yeah what what is your favorite part of hosting welcome home so far so far jeez oh, Coming up on um, five years here in a month, so. I mean, I, I, for me, I think my, f- sorry, th- this is going to be sappy and, and you guys are just going to have to deal with it. I, I think the, the best part is, is that I get to talk to you guys every week. Yeah. That I is, think that's, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. No, that, that is, that is great. I enjoy that too. I see. I like the, I, I like the listeners. I like interacting with the listeners. I like. I like that they enjoy this and I I like when I see them engaging with the stuff that we're doing. And like, so the memes I think are a thing that that make me laugh because it's like, they're really paying attention and then they're using the things that we're saying as, as something really funny and, and engaging. And it just, that kind of stuff makes me happy. And also it makes me happy that we've been, you know, pretty successful at this. Like that's, that's a big thing for me too, is that, you know, it's one thing for us to just do it. But like, if we were only having like a hundred people uh, a week listening to this, it would be, uh, I think I feel like not as fulfilling. It's 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 nice that we have such a great audience and they're uh, a cool audience and they're they get it, they get what we're doing, and they and they just uh, you know pick up on the things that we we do and 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 how we do things and and kind of do their own thing based on that, you know, and keep our community kind of in the way that we want it to be, right? So, I mean, because even still, like. We occasionally have a fly in the ointment in the uh, in in the group, but really, for the most part, the group is still pretty cool. Like, there's really not a lot of drama there, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I would agree. <laughs> it's Damon. Are you not answering this because you already answered it on the Facebook page? <laughs> no, I mean, I would say it's probably both of you know both of your thoughts together, right? I mean, it's definitely nice to talk to somebody and have something of kind of a team effort at something. So I think there's that. I mean, for me, it's probably more about that than going to Disney, obviously, at this point, at least from the standpoint of, you know, the the parks themselves. But there's also benefits. I think for me, you know, if I kind of go outside of that, it's just seeing the, the outpouring of help w- with anything I've ever tried to do. Like, you know, you have Charles Mary helping, you know, helping us out well helping me out personally with some you know picture stuff for my son we have keith helping you know out like i mean i just i sent keith a message just you know this past week hey you know can you take a look at this you know he's a graphic designer and and, you know in the in the group super nice guy helped us with uh, our shirts as well as some other things um you know i just hey you know take a look at this i'm doing this for my son what do you think and you know everyone's so 
nice, right? Yeah. Like, you know, with Jeremy sending me syrup. Yeah. <laughs> Mon- Monaco well, you syrup. haven't talked about that on the show at all, right? Yeah, that's that's not even something you talked about. No, he's sending me monocle syrup, right? So there's that. Um, I just think syrup. <laughs> I think that there's just – I think that part of it has been the most enjoyable, I think, just to interact with people in that way, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. What, right. what did my son say today? He's like, I can't even believe people like – want to listen right or something along those lines like, <laughs> okay, i mean we can't really it. believe it either <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe uh, it so honestly i don't uh i don't tell a lot of my um like my coworkers or my in real life friends about this um and it's just because i i'm not great at self-promoting and i i feel like it's almost bragging when i talk about it which th- that's just me. I, I I know that's not what I'm doing, but um, yeah. But every once in a while, it comes up, and it's like, like I I, I mentioned it to my boss at work. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got a podcast, and he's like, oh yeah, cool. I do a podcast too, and he's like, yeah, you know it, you know it's going really good. We've got like a hundred listeners. I'm like, yeah, I think we passed like forty seven hundred likes on our Facebook page, and he's like. What the heck? <laughs> I think we're at seventy three hundred. <laughs> I thought I thought I saw forty seven a while, or maybe uh, yeah. no. It's it's almost 70. it's seven thousand oh, something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but but crazy. or but yeah. yeah. This again. The, but this was a while ago that we had this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was. But at the time, it was like just that. Like all all of a sudden, when I said it, and he looked at like I realized like oh, this is actually way bigger than I I realize it is. And you know, like we say all the time, I don't feel like this is as big as it is, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny it's funny you say that though, Trevor, because I'm the same way. Like, right, I don't really advertise this to like family or whatever, like it or or other friends. It's you know, some some of my friends know about it, right? But it like after uh my my sister and my brother in law were here last weekend, right? And I you know, we recorded the show and they stayed a couple days into the week and they just work from here and so Monday morning, I, I walked out of my office and I'm like, I said, my sister is like, she had her headphones. On. I'm like, oh, what are you listening to? She goes, oh, I'm listening to your podcast. I'm like, what? It's like, why are you doing that? And she's like, does that make you uncomfortable? I'm like, yes, extraordinarily. <laughs> like, <laughs> even though you were in the other room while I was recording it, like it just, it feels very weird, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's just, I, I especially don't like the sound of my own voice. So that, that is not a, a great thing for me either. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, uh, so Sean, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Sean says, long time listener, first time asker, what do you think about the recent rumors of an expanded Skylander route to Disney Springs, Saratoga? I know there's been rumors in the past for Skylander extensions for places like Animal Kingdom or Disney Springs. In theory, it would be awesome for SSR owners, but I can see it getting annoying real fast if people staying off site will use it to get to the parks, much yeah. like uh, what goes on with the Saratoga buses. Hmm. Interesting. I think um, that this would be great. Oh my goodness. But why yeah. can't like, listen, you have to have a ticket to get into the park. I mean, it's very easy to set up a system where you're only able to use it. If you have a reservation. Yeah, you could do. Well, but then it's um, because, like, if you look at like the monorail or the the rest of the Skyliner, those mm-hmm. those don't require tickets or anything. But I can see where you know some people will use it as, hey, you know, park at Disney Springs, use the the Disney transportation to get to where they want to go, and then that causes problems. For, like, like I I get what I get what Sean's saying. Yeah, but the thing is, just because the monorail doesn't have it doesn't mean that if they're building something new, they couldn't implement it. That yeah, they, you're you're right. I mean, that, yeah, just that make is it Saratoga fair. guests yeah. only, right? They they make you yeah. scan your magic band and prove your Saratoga guests, and that's it, right? That'd be yeah. great, though. I, I wish the Skyliner went everywhere. Went to, so, which went to Animal Kingdom. Yeah, right. Could you imagine that ride? So, oh yeah. So yeah, Saratoga would mean that would just be Skyliner to Epcot, right? Because uh, that's yeah. the closest resort. Well, you know, I, it's funny because he mentioned this rumor. I have not seen this rumor anywhere, so I, I'm not sure I where this is. I haven't either, actually, yeah. and I'm like on the boards 8 million times a day. Yeah, I, I don't know where this one is coming from. I don't know if it's like Reddit or if it's like uh, what are you, the Diz or like, you know, one of those places, or uh, Diz boards, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. But I, I, I do know that they built it with, uh, you know, they built it so it could be expanded, right? Like that, that turnaround station that they have, like that's part of that they can, you know, 
make that they can you know expand from that turnaround station they you know they built it so it can be expanded further i just don't know if they're going to do it anytime soon but i would love to see it because I, I we talked about this on the show skyliner is my favorite disney transportation option it's the best i love it it's quiet it's peaceful it's fast it's great right so i, I would love if they brought it to animal kingdom and Although at the same time, I feel like I always get an easy Animal Kingdom reservation because some people don't want to stay there because of the it's far away from it's everything. Far, yeah. 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 So I feel like if there was easy tra- Disney transportation and there was another transportation op- option besides just the bus, maybe people would start staying there more often. But, you know, no, whatever. I, I'd, harder. <laughs> I'd be willing to give it up for that <laughs> for for uh, for Skyliner line. So. Uh, yeah, no, I, I have not seen this rumor. I would, I would love to find out where this rumor is coming from. But I, actually, I think last time Ziggy was on the show, we talked about the Skyliner exp- uh, expanding. I seem yeah, to remember that. I, Wait, did you tell everyone that I hosed Ziggy being on the show today? We did, we did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we told him it was your fault. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. Not even a question. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> well, I mean, not really my fault. It's, it's my not son's really. fault. Let's yeah, let's yeah. blame him. Let's let's put the blame where blame is due. Let's what? It's, Zig- it's Ziggy's fault? Is oh, it's your son? No, I said it's my son's fault. fault. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, blame it on your sons. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So I, I hope this happens. I hope they bring the Skyliner everywhere. I, I would love the Skyliner be everywhere. I, I, I just think it's it's such a cool way to, you know. Yeah, it's. Get I mean, yeah. To to me, same thing. It's it's such a no brainer that. You know, anywhere that they put it, there, there's no there's no bad placement for a Skyliner. And I'm sure I'm going to eat my words saying that because th- th- there's got to be oh, one place there, where they yeah, would yeah, put it. There could a, be bad places for Skyliner, I feel yeah. like. But I mean, from any resort to any park, is there really a bad Skyliner route? <laughs> I don't I don't think for for that. I mean, there's bad placement of it within those. Sure. Situations, but. From a reason, well, what if it was like Wilderness Lodge, Tapcot, which is, I mean, that's doubling up on the uh, monorail, but not really because the monorail doesn't go to Wilderness Lodge, so right, but but it would be running parallel to the monorail, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that makes. Sense. I feel like if I feel like there's already a boat, like you shouldn't put it there, but yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It would just be nice for Animal Kingdom to have a different transportation option than just bus, you know, like like riding on the back of a rhino. That yeah, feels like really that. inefficient. Um, <laughs> that would but, be the best, though. I mean, how fast are rhino? Oh, I guess they can go like thirty miles per hour or something, right? Maybe I don't know. Let's see. Let me Google how fast is a rhino. <laughs> I feel there's a whole bunch of legal implications. <laughs> oh man, I'm right. I'm right. Thirty one miles per hour for. <laughs> What about like a rhino chariot? Okay, so like a oh, rhino wow. pulling like, you know, like how many people can you fit in the chariot though? Like that's the question. All right, well, so let, let's not go chariot. Let's go like old school Cinderella. Um, you do it like the Cinderella. What's that thing called? The pump turns into a pump. She, yeah, they yeah, turn yeah, it from a carriage. pump. What is that thing called? Oh my, car- not, it's not a carousel. What, what the heck is that? Carriage? Carriage. carriage. Thank you. I, I could not get that word out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. A, a nice rhino drawn carriage from animal kingdom to wherever you'd like to go i i mean i, I like it i like it <laughs> see that that wouldn't or it would have to be random animals because oh for sure what like when they don't have enough rhinos and two um it would it would keep you know <laughs> they they would be able to you'd be able to you know have a different experience every time because hey you know it's this animal this time you know what if they had <laughs> self-driving teslas painted oh, as animals it's it's funny you said that because i was just gonna say i i would bet in the next 10 years that they end up with autonomous buses at some point. yeah yeah but it painted like different animals i mean animal they could Kingdom. do that i mean yeah they have the skins on them mm-hmm. now right so and i mean i remember i when we first started the podcast i remember disney making a pretty sizable investment in an autonomous bus company that and we were thinking that they were going to try to do i mean could I, you I think imagine they, though i i couldn't even imagine like just the, the disaster. It wouldn't even be the driving part of it. It would be the ridiculous fighting, pushing um, of people into the bus. That would be the problem. You think so? I mean, that's the problem now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think, well, and then you have someone kind of managing that. If you had nobody managing it, there'd no, be no. fights about people. Like you yeah, need to I move in <laughs> further because we can fit. 
I, no, I, you need to move in. I, I think you'd still need somebody like at the bus, especially to help like handicap folks in and like get them like buckle down and everything. You'd like you'd have to have an attendant, but at least they wouldn't have to have a you know a bus driver special license for that. You know, what I mean? you could have anybody do that, right? Well, but I don't the, necessarily know if that cost is outweighed by an autonomous bus, right? Yeah, the, the uh, funny you, thing is, is y- even having an attendant, they would still need to know what to do if it broke down. So it doesn't really true. save them anything. <laughs> yeah. Saves them paying someone to drive the bus. <laughs> yeah. and, and, but I just don't think that cost is that, you know, again, think about how much it would cost to have autonomous buses and if there was a problem. So does that really outweigh that? I don't know. I don't know. We're back to Scott. I feel like, you know, or, or, or Tesla's painted like zebras. <laughs> like zebras. I like it. I like it. All right. All right. Uh, so Chris says, why do you think Moonlight Magic is arguably the most beloved person? This is definitely not. I could care less about Moonlight Magic. <laughs> you basically have to win the lottery twice to get in in terms of when they randomly occur and then calling in. Uh, I, who's calling in for that? I, I, doing it on the on the website. And then the fewest percentage of members have probably used this perk above all others. Never understood the devotion to such a random look perk. I don't think it's the I don't think it's the most beloved. I just think it's like, you know, for some people too. Part of like getting like part of the part of getting into it is like part of the game for them, right? Like some people, absolutely, yeah. right? Like yeah. there's a certain group of people that like you know it, it was like this with fast passes too. It's like it's almost like a game of getting the fast passes you want, you know, or the dining reservations you want. And this is the same thing with this. Like I could care less about Moonlight Magic. I said this I before. Care less either. Yeah, take all the money you spend on Moonlight Magic and give me lounges in each park, and I'm good. You know, <laughs> like yeah, because. Like from my point of view, you know, I've I've tried to get into Moonlight Magic, but well, you did, right? No, I didn't because we. Uh, well, I thought the trip got canceled, but I thought you were good. If you, ex- were yeah, good. yeah, like you were I, in yeah. though. I, I was in, and yeah, the, the trip got canceled, but we still ended up doing after hours events anyway, and, and that's really all I wanted out of Moonlight Magic is that you know it's a free after hours event, which you know that's I see where the draw is to that absolutely, but. Yeah, to to your point, Tom, if they took that away and did more lounges, I would still do after hours events. <laughs> so yeah, it's not it's not moonlight magic. It's what it's what you get from moonlight magic, if that makes I sense. Feel, I feel like <laughs> moonlight magic is a nice to have, right? Like it's it's nice that it's there and I'm never gonna reschedule a trip around it. And but if it's just so happens to be occurring while I'm there, cool. Great, I'm excited. I'll try to get in. If I don't, it's not the end of the world, you know. Yeah, I the same thing. I I don't plan my trips around it. I never will because they they don't announce them far enough in advance, anyways. So sure, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, there's plenty of other perks to get excited about, you know. So, all right. So you want to do Sarah's uh, question yeah. here? Um. So Sarah says we try to do fun stuff. For, uh, for our countdowns for upcoming trips. We're trying something new with a blind taste test challenge of Disney foods. Think hell's kitchen when they test the chef's palates, help us round out our food challenges. So far I have churros, dough whip, Mickey bar, pretzel with plastic cheese, a uh, peanut butter and jelly shake. <laughs> and then uh, she says, side note, our kids are competing for Disney gift cards. If they lose, they have to choose their consequences. <laughs> This sounds like a thing Whoa. that would go on a <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah I, I don't watch Hell's Kitchen, though. I don't know what this is. Uh, I, I I think I've seen some of the episodes. And yeah, I know that at one point in the show, they, they do a competition where they blindfold the chefs and they make them guess what different, um, what different uh, plates are that they're tasting. I mean, and if they guess right, this? then they like, get something. I- a yeah. churro tastes nothing like a pretzel. Like that's what I'm trying to figure out. I I almost think it would be like um, you would I, give them you like do, two things similar. And well, I say you do Dole whips and you just do every flavor. Like I feel like right. that's that's the Guess challenge. The flavor, yeah. Guess the flavor of Dole Whip. <laughs> like, dude, if I have trouble telling the difference between a churro and a pretzel, like I have way bigger problems. <laughs> you might need to take me somewhere but, to the hospital or something. But I mean, if it was like I don't know. Or yeah, it, like Dole Whip versus the peanut butter and jelly shake. Even yeah, that's <laughs> like all all these. Is things that pretzel you're right. in there just throws it all off? Like a churro? Like I okay? Yeah, sweet, like, sweet, sweet, savory, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I miss the pretzel, I got I got big problems. 
but I, I, I guess <laughs> I guess what Sarah is asking for is you know what else? It's, it's Dole Whips. It's every flavor of Dole Whip. I think that's the that's the blind taste test. That's the winner. I like it. Uh, I'm trying to think of something they have like a variety popcorn. You could do popcorn, popcorn would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you could do some different flavors of popcorn because a lot of different flavors of popcorn you can get, right? I'm just thinking of things that have different flavors, so you could because I'm guessing they're not like. Like like you said, they're not. And and by the way, my my headphones got pulled out of the socket, so I didn't hear what you guys said for like two minutes. Um, we were just talking about you. We were yeah, okay, about fair you. enough. No um, so no, I mean, like, I feel like it has to be things that have multiple flavors, right? Because otherwise, yeah. like, you're not like you said, Damon. Like, you're going to be able to easily tell the difference between a churro and a Mickey bar, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there, I, th- there's not a lot of things other than Dole Whip that you could do that with. I mean, you do cookies. You do some cookies, yeah. yeah. Cake. How about like uh, macaroons? Yeah, they got those macaroons that uh, you could do those. Get some, do some crepes from that crepe place there's, that has the ninety-year-old guy. Flavors of crepes, dude. <laughs> well, it's sweeter, <laughs> they're sweet and savory. You, you could do a bunch of different kinds. Are you talking about the that. booth? Or are you talking about the restaurant? I'm talking about the well. The booth has a couple of different too, but I mean, it's I got like both. two. It's chocolate, strawberry, or the what's it called? Vanilla. That's it. That's three. So there you go. <laughs> well, it's really strawberry. Yeah. So you guess there's three. Yeah. Sure. That's not too hard. I can tell the difference between chocolate and strawberry. And yeah. What about uh? What about doing a blind taste test with the flavors of soda from uh, Club McCool? Ooh, I like that. Right. But That's like the thing is, you, you wouldn't know what the flavors are. Like, how, you know what I mean? Like, what are you gonna yeah. go? Oh yeah, it's that. Um, it's that one from. Oh, that's from Madagascar. Like, you're not well, no, gonna but, know but, that. But like tasting like, like is it a pineapple soda is it you know what what is the flavor because sometimes like yeah trying different sodas it's not always mm, clear what. Know, that's a tough one that's almost too tough yeah well maybe you ha- include like a description right like you have like you know this okay. one is this flavor this one's this flavor this and then you gotta have to match it up yeah, yeah i think yeah, it's yeah if, if you if you gave it a good boundary where it's like here is six sodas and you know you have to guess which one it is right yeah, like if you're tasting the one from China and you go, "Hey, wait a second, this tastes like somebody took a bunch of cigarette butts and soaked it in water overnight." Like that's <laughs> <laughs> that one is the everyone says I'm, it tastes like barbecue sauce. I thought it tasted like cigarettes. I'm, I was I was I'm really it. curious to try this one now when we go because oh, uh, so bad. Yeah. I, I, I it's wait. so bad. <laughs> There's there, I mean no, yeah. nothing's nothing is better. I think and this is maybe just me, but the what was it club country club country club is where it's at like if you like creamsicle country club right um but outside of that it's like man that that, don't even i think china is way worse than beverly like by a thousand times (laughs) i i think you're gonna find i i've tried a lot of weird stuff over the years so (laughs) i i may not feel the same way you do about it (laughs) yeah i'm never drinking that again like that's the that's the one i would trick people with now if if i wouldn't trick people with beverly anymore i would trick people with the one from china and i forget the name of it off the top of my head, but that's the one I would trick people with for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys want to do Dan's meatball question that I didn't put in here, or was that is that one too ridiculous <laughs> for this episode? What was it again? I don't even remember. Um, I think something it was, about the perfect size of a meatball or something. Yeah, I, I uh, we haven't had a yeah. really ridiculous Dan question in a while, so I was going to put it in there, and I think I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like like racquetball size. Like it's got to be big, dude. Small. Small meatballs are no good. Because they cook down, right? Yeah, it's gotta be like I think racquetball size and up. Yeah, let me let me see. Let me see his tennis exact ball question. would be good. Tennis ball is like huge That's though. A lot of meat. No, nah, but tennis ball is good because you can cut it in half and it's still like not dry. He says, What's the ideal size for a meatball? Bigger or smaller than a golf ball? Oh, bigger, not even a question. I agree that bigger than a golf ball, but I don't know. Tennis ball feels huge to me. Tennis ball is great size. You can cut them in half and then lay them on a sandwich. And all right, uh, you know what? I'll give you that. But I would say, you know, since we have a, a, you know, a starting point, way way bigger than a golf ball, bigger than a golf ball, easy. It sounds well, that's good. meatballs smaller than a golf ball. I mean, that's that's in those bag meatballs. Who's eating bagged meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> I love a good bagged frozen meatball, Dan. <laughs> no, no. I, I love you. You can't pan them off on people from New Jersey. <laughs> I knew I should have put this on here. <laughs> uh, 
So no, I, listen. I don't even eat meatballs. I, I just think this is hilarious how much <laughs> you guys are invested in this. <laughs> L- listen, for me, like, I really don't care. I mean, I, I, I like to slum it occasionally with my food. I like a good meatball, though, Damon. Like, my grandmother, you know, 100% Italian. She used to make the best meatballs. And even though my mom has the recipe, she cannot replicate my grandmother's meatballs. You know, like, they're well, just... Wait, what? So here's the thing. So your grandmother on one side, so what, 100% Italian. So what about the rest of your uh, relatives, though, right? Not anywhere close to 100%, right? Um, See, so, yeah, my my, uh, my great-grandparents came directly nope. from Italy. Yep. So from my grandmother's side. Level. But then yep. the rest the, the rest of my family came from all over the place. So, yeah. Just the, the, so, but, but growing up, I, I we lived with my grandmother. So my grandmother would always make us, you know, authentic What about Italian your grandfather? Food, so. Uh, my uh, my grandfather, um, his family's like German and all sorts of stuff. Like okay. they're all- so so. I can tell you from like that Italian household, dude. You don't give up your recipes. So the recipe your mother has is not the recipe. That's just how oh, it works, I mean, she's man. Probably not. I just you know I, that I, is just the way it works, man. <laughs> like, I, but usually you pass works. your recipes down to your kids. Nah, not not <laughs> Italian written, recipes. No. Nah, they're- like you got to figure it out. Like she got she got all the building blocks to to make it happen. Make it work. You yeah. got to do work now, though. Like yeah, you got to put in work. You can't just think you're going to go from there and it's going to be good. No. Yeah, no, no, nobody made meatballs like my grandma. My my grandmother's meatballs were the the absolute best. So, <laughs> so anyway, she had secrets. She, there was some, there's some secret in those meatballs because they I mean I didn't you know I don't really well, eat it, red meat all that often but like if she made meatballs I was eating that you know it was the same thing like my grandmother uh, you know again like dude no one made meatballs or sausage like her but yeah you know we all have the recipes but no you don't have the real recipe mm-hmm. we don't I have mean, the real recipe I, nobody's got the real recipe. my my uh, grandmother was uh, Ukrainian, and uh, oh. she made pierogies and roulade and stuff like that. And um, yeah, my my dad has made some of that stuff over the years, but it you know he never quite got it. He, he's made his own version of it, but it was never. Yeah, what I think she made. I think the only way to have it happen is that if you were part of that cooking experience, so the ages would have to line up and being close enough to like perpetually cook it for a multitude of years yeah. with that same person. And I think that's how you, you could get it, but that's about it, man. I love pierogies by the way, Trevor. Oh, you're just talking about pierogies. <laughs> I love pierogies so yeah. much. <laughs> they are, they are good. Yeah, man. Especially we, we you to, a, if you get proper homemade ones. Yes. We, we used to have a pierogi restaurant around here that made, you know, they were all house made pierogies and it was, Oh, it was the best thing. And I was so sad when they closed. Cause I love pierogies. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, uh, that was that was us just talking about food for a while. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. As usual, for getting us way off track. Um, why don't we go ahead and do our ad? All right. So this week we have a DVC Rental Store. So DVC Rental Store, a world of DVC company, offers magical vacations at incredible value. Save sixty percent off retail rates at premium Disney resorts. DVC Rental Store now includes deposits as low as 25% of time of booking and a built-in cancellation policy for every reservation. As always, DVC Rental Store pays the most to our members looking to rent their points. Want to learn more? Go to dvcrentalstore.com or call 1-855-DVC-RENT. That's 382-7368. And let them know that Welcome Home sent you. So I was already repping them today as I was talking to my friend who's sitting on bundles of points. And I was asking him what he was doing this summer. And he said, I don't know, but I got to do something with my bank dvc points and i was like i know what you can do yeah you yeah. can make yourself some pocket uh, some pocket i was money trying right to there. tell him how much money i made last year <laughs> yeah. so when you get far enough into the contract it's almost like you're making money because yeah, yeah. i told him i said dude he was talking about selling and i was like see here's the thing though like you can probably make more just renting your points for the next 40 years i feel like you could yeah. Mm-hmm. Then selling, like, yeah, you get that influx of money right away. But if you rent for the next 40 years, and then if you decide you want to go, you're still covered. But if you don't, like, yeah. So, I mean, you, you're paying your dues and and making money. I sure. mean, I, I made 500 bucks just from 30 points I had sitting around, like, that I was just going to eat. You know? I mean, <laughs> that's not nothing. That's a, that's yeah, a good yeah. portion. I mean, that's probably a fourth of my dues for the year, at least. So... I, I will say this though, uh, unfortunately, the, no one wants was, to hear about your Canada stories. <laughs> no, I, I think they do, <laughs> but we've so, heard them like ten times already. <laughs> no, I, um, p- plot twist: I'm actually not going to be renting my points out this year. Oh, okay. Ooh, wait, hold on. That is a plot twist. 
Yeah. Um, so, da, da, da. so what happened was, so the, there is the form you have to put in through the IRS. And um, I, <laughs> I messed up on doing that because I don't deal with those forms no- normally. So the lesson learned here is, you know, make sure you've got all the boxes properly filled in because they rejected it. And now the it's problem is, is, yeah, the, the problem is, is that in the time it would take me to resubmit, uh, my points are going to expire before um, before I can get the approval from the IRS in order for me to rent my points. Wait, so what are you doing? So I'm actually going to be looking at uh, converting my points to interval. Ooh, okay. Nice. Yeah, we can so, hear some so, of that experience. Yeah, yeah. The, so we're going to change it up here and see how that goes. But I'm the the thing I learned is once um, I I need to get my passport back because I had to send the IRS my passport, and that's part of this is that. <laughs> Because we have the meetup coming, I can't go and send it off again. Um, you have to send your actual passport. Yes. <laughs> Wait, like your actual physical passport crazy. in the like? Yeah. Wow. Yep they won't they won't accept or well, it was a bunch of work to get a notarized copy, and it was easier to send it by registered mail. Yeah, geez. welcome to Canada, guys. That seems like um, a good wait. Way it's to hard to get passport. notarized copies of things. Like, dude, I can go anywhere and get something notarized it, in the U.S. for like free. Right now, it's it's a no. We got to pay for it. That's. <laughs> I mean, you usually, well, I, I most places make you pay for it these days, Damon. I feel like no. no. Every, I mean, if you have a bank account, any bank does it. Uh, mm, not the same up here. And the UPS uh, store does it. But um, UPS yeah, store so, doesn't charge for that. I don't know. I think if you have one of those business accounts, they don't. Oh, okay. But I just go to the bank. I mean, I have like four different banks I bank with. So like, dude, I, I always get to go to the bank. So the bank. again, poor Trevor, we have to, we have to jump through a lot more <laughs> hoops up here than you guys do. The The point was, is that I'm going to try, I'm going to try and do this again after the meetup, because then I'll have enough time to go through the process properly. But this, you know, for anyone doing this internationally, there, it is it takes a lot more just to get set up. Once I have that, it should be easier because when, once you have the, uh, once you've got the form properly done, everything. Um, so I don't understand though. So yeah. if somebody in the U S um, not me, but if someone was like, Hey, I'm going to send Trevor $15,000 because he, mm-hmm. what did you do for me? Um, I don't know. He sent- sold you maple syrup. You sold me Canadian maple syrup, which yeah. may be better than Vermont Sorry, maple Jeremy. syrup. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> so I sent you, hey, Trevor, here's 15 grand um, for you shipping the maple syrup plus the cost of the maple syrup. It's a lot of, it's a lot of maple syrup. It's a lot of maple syrup. It's like a so I don't drink. understand, though. You can't take that money? Uh, I have to get uh, a tax exemption from the U.S. government is what the whole – problem is <laughs> so that that's what that whole form is is that uh we can't uh, otherwise we end up in uh yeah it's it's complicated wait hold on so let, let me let me understand this. you can take the money it's just that you're going to get doubly taxed on it got the paperwork uh, too yeah, yeah and then i end up uh or then the irs is coming after me Jeez. okay yeah because <laughs> they'll, they'll do that <laughs> Even though we're international, it's it's a real pain in the butt. Sounds like it. It yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. Reminds me, I need to do my. T- it, it's a it, again. <laughs> it's it's a whole thing with um, an agreement between Canada and the U.S. for taxes yeah. and all that. Yeah. Again, I don't. I, I learned just enough about it f- through this form to, and then, like I said, I I found out this week that uh, I got denied on the form because I missed one part in the application. That was not clear. Well, that's on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys want to talk about Boardwalk? I'm, no. I'm excited about this. I'm pumped. <laughs> no, but I guess so. Why aren't you? Pu- Wait, what do you mean you don't want to talk about this? I thought you'd be interested in this. This is good. No, I am. I'm just, I'm so interested in Dr. Teeth that I can't, I, like, I can't get past that. <laughs> do you want to talk about the Dr. Teeth thing now? We could go back. We could, we could do it. <laughs> no, that's okay, fine. We'll get there. We'll get there. I promise. Um, so we'll, we'll see if I the get there. Go ahead. Let's yeah, start we'll with the board. <laughs> All right, so they're doing some refurbs over at Boardwalk, which I think is great. They're going to I think one of the problems I always had with Boardwalk is that like while there's like food options around, like the there's not really a quick service there and like if you wanted to like it, you have to walk really far to get there. You know what I mean? 
And they, so they're going to do right, a it coffee bar. It is not bar. that big. No, no, it's not. But they're going to do um, a coffee bar. Um, and then they're also going to build, they're building a cake shop. A, the cake now that cake I'm shop. excited about. Yeah. I guess this I don't is know like who a Gwendolyn Rogers place. is, though. Yeah, I don't What's know that? who she is. I have to look that up. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I just Gwendolyn Googled Rogers. it, but I, I guess this is a fairly famous big shop. I, I don't know anything about it, though. Well, I mean, they. I guess so. I'm a little disappointed that I don't know, though. Yeah, they're selling their cakes for 115 dollars on this website. Uh, that's a, for just like a cake. Feels yeah, like but why lot. do only 800 people like her Facebook? Like, I don't, I don't consider that big. Wait, I don't know. Is this like is this her house in the picture? Like, what is this? I mean, this is like a shop. I mean, I'm sure their shop has more likes on it than. It's not. It's I'm on her her. I'm on her page, the Gwendolyn Rogers yeah, no, Cake Bake Shop owner. No, the Cake Bake Shop has 65,000 people that liked it. Oh, this yeah. must be her personal person it Must page. be a personal one, yeah. Must be a personal oh, one. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. The cakes look good, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I saw somebody post in one of the Facebook groups. I guess it's a, a local thing to them, and they're, this person is famous for, for this Cake Bake Shop. So, but What about these pies? I'm really about pies. I'm always about Apple pies. crumble, key lime, yeah. peanut butter mousse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're also the Boardwalk Bakery is going to turn into a sandwich shop. So I, I actually think I that's feel a great like sandwiches are just like the biggest waste of money on vacation though. Oh man, I love a good sandwich. But it's supposed to be like quick service mm-hmm. though. It's not supposed to be like, you know Yeah, but like you eat sandwiches all the time. Like that's, I don't know. Yeah, I that's feel, the easy out. I just I feel like sandwiches are just a, a waste uh, in yeah. terms of because it's not like these sandwiches are gonna be cheap. Oh no! I mean, of course not. But why? You know, of course they're not going to be cheap. <laughs> so, I have, to, I have to see the menu. I'm hopeful that it's not like just regular sandwiches. Like, give me something, something cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, they are also going to redesign the lobby, and uh, like I said, they're going to. It looks like they're adding a coffee bar, and then they're going to add the. They're going to refresh the guest rooms as well. Um, I do hope they don't take like. The, some of the weirdness out of the lobby in the boardwalk, you know what I mean? I, I, I was going to say, do you think the horrific chairs are going to go away? <laughs> I see, like, that's what I'm talking about, though. Like, I hope they don't take that out, right? Because, like, that's part of the charm of that restaurant. I mean, that restaurant, that uh, hotel to me is, like, the really weird, the weird theme yeah, of it, you know? They're so, like... W- wake me up when we talk about Disney true. Plus again. <laughs> okay. I thought you'd be interested in this one, so... <laughs> I was, but I'm done now. All right. <laughs> Um, so the, just off the lobby, a coffee bar, artisanal beverage and quick bites, uh, available to go. So, and, uh, some, looks like some seating areas they're going to add to. So, I mean, look, it's good that they're, they're going to, you know, make use of the, some of the empty space on the boardwalk and, and they're going to, it's, it feels to me like they've taken into some, uh, into account some of like the guest feedback about boardwalk and they're trying to give more options there, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely overdue. Um, yeah. and yeah, it, like, I mean, I, th- I think every resort goes through this, right. You know, that they, yeah. they kind of hit their, their down point and then they give it a refurb and yeah, like I said, I just, like you said, I, I, I know they already nuked the, the clown slide. Um, but, <laughs> uh, hope, hopefully they, they, uh, um, yeah, hopefully they keep some of that. Uh, like you said, it's, I know you say it's weirdness, but it's that just that early 19th century aesthetic, which by today's standards is definitely weird. Well, but, and, uh, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, a lot of it is like, you know, uh, I, it reminds me of like Asbury Park and it's very new it, in a lot of ways. It's a little New Jersey shore ish. And that's that's why it rem- it like to me, it's it's cool. And and I, I just hope they keep a lot of that charm and don't make it like, you know, super luxury kind of thing and by the way we should know too this is not yeah yeah we should know too this isn't the villas getting refurbished right this is this is the actual hotel part of it um and the lobby so uh this while i put this under dvc news i only did so because um it it is kind of dvc news because it's you know it's it's well they share the same lobby and you know it's yeah it's no different than yeah polynesian or wilderness lodge or anywhere else that yeah yeah, yeah. those things affect your your dvc stay as well yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, I, we don't need to talk about the ID card thing being fixed. I, I know no, a lot of people it, are having issues with their digital ID cards, but I, I think I think they're getting fixed now. So Disney IT is working. Let's move on. <laughs> they're getting it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> 
I did think this yeah. was interesting too, and I, I almost, I almost feel like we've never talked about guaranteed weeks on this show with with DVC. It's because they're expensive. <laughs> I know, but like, I, it's, I feel like it is a part of the program we've just never actually really talked about. Like, eh, or I mean, maybe we have mentioned it before, but eh, so Disney's rebranding these guaranteed weeks as they're calling a favorite weeks now. And if you're not like familiar with what a guaranteed week is essentially look at it this way like right now you have all this flexibility to book whatever you want you could do a favorite week which basically guarantees you the same week every single year right so that's you if you want to go the week of the fourth of july every year you could go the week of the fourth of july every year you know what i mean like that's that's basically what it is the problem like like you said trevor is that you have to buy more points to accommodate that right so you have to Mm -hmm. buy um, you have to buy how much point, how many points that would cost for that week plus ten percent more, right? So I think that's what it was, right? Ten percent. Uh, yeah, like yeah. that. I, I, I get them. You know, they're they're rebranding it as favorite weeks and everything, but to me, that seems like. I, I mean, there, there's not a lot of people that can say every year I'm going to take vacation like from this day to this day. Yeah, it is. A, I, it, it is a little weird to me, right? Yeah. You're paying for less flexibility, but I mean, no. Well, you could still use those points. Like, so basically, they they get they they book that week for you automatically every year, but you can cancel it and use it for another oh. week if you want to. Okay, so you can. But yeah, all right. But yeah, still, I yeah, that it seems so. Uh, like, I I can't imagine there's a lot of people out there that that would commit to that, right? Like, it does I would, feel very rigid, right? Yeah, I, I would never commit to you know I'm going the first week of September every year. Like, that's just I don't know. On the, on the plus side, though, and this is by the way, this is an article from uh, DVC News, um, and, and they they've got some you know they always keep track of DVC uh, stuff. Uh, they they said you know uh, the uh, basically, as an example, uh, in a January Lakeview Resort Studio at Grand Floridian would normally cost 153 points and re- requires a purchase of 168 points. So for, to have that guaranteed week. And so the, the week is written into the contract. They book it every year for you. But the interesting thing they put in here, though, too, um, is that it actually protects you from reallocation, too. So mm. meaning... If the if they reallocate the points where you have to uh, where it's going to cost more during your guaranteed week, you can actually you're locked in at that price, right? So there, I mean that's a benefit to it too, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that, but yeah, I, again though, I I don't know, I like <laughs> I, I get I get wanting to pay for that security, and I get wanting to have that kind of guarantee, but I guess that's just not how I would ever no. plan to use my points. Well, cause, cause so. life happens, man. Like I, you exactly. know, but, but again, yeah. you, I mean, it is nice to have that peace of mind where you like, don't have to worry about getting your reservation or not. Like I get that, but, and I, I'm sure it's good. And I know a lot of people, I think the people that do like, um, Oh man, it was popular. I know some people used to do it like during run Disney, like, you know, when, when run Disney would be every year. Mm-hmm. So that they would make sure that they had a room for run Disney, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't care about that. But I, I guess run Disney is not the same week every year though, is it? Well, no. So, I mean, some of the events are, um, they, they did a promotion one time, uh, that was targeted run Disney, uh, of events. Um, I mean, usually they do them around the same time, I think. Hmm. So, but it's worth noting that these are they only offer this at Alani Riviera and and this is coming back up again by the way because Grand Floridian is open back up for purchases and they offer it at Grand Floridian so so there's that so I mean that's that's all I have to say about that one I mean you know I I just thought we've never really talked about that topic I don't think on the show and I thought I thought it was kind of interesting right yeah it's it, it's interesting but yeah like I said I feel it's so so it, yeah. it's such a niche. Thing that you know that that's why I think we've never really talked about it because I, I don't think there's a lot of people that would fall into that this category. Take advantage of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, okay, so right. Damon, are you, inter- are you interested in this Disney Plus item? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Disney Plus is adding a cheaper ad-supported subscription tier uh, later this year. So think like Hulu. Uh, you know, Hulu has the lower tier that's the cheapest that. You, that comes with ads. I just, uh, I just don't know how. Um, 
How are they going to do it? I, I just don't know if I, and I've always thought about this, right? So let's just say it's five dollars difference, yeah, right, or whatever the cost may be, three dollars for like the amount of commercials I'm watching in TV. Like my time, anybody's time has to be worth four dollars. Yeah, well, like I, I don't disagree with you, right? Although I am, I also refuse to pay for the ad free Hulu bundle. I mean, for the ad free Hulu tier because they don't. I, I mean, unless they've changed this, they don't include that in the Disney Plus bundle, which you know drives me nuts. Uh, I would pay more for the bundle if they had the ad free version, but um, but yeah, no, I, I I don't disagree with you. I I would definitely pay the higher one. I don't like watching commercials when I'm watching streaming, but some people will. Some people this I understand why they're doing this. They're doing this to bring in more subscribers, obviously, by having a cheaper tier because there are some people that don't care about the commercial piece. They'll watch commercials and pay less. Yeah, knowing us, they're probably just going to add it, and we're not going to even get the option for a commercial-free version. That's how it works here. Oh, you mean in Canada? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I don't yeah. know. I think they. I think they'll have different tiers. I, th- I think they want it. Uh, we we don't get the same. No, you you can't assume just because they're doing something with Disney Plus in the states that they're going to do the same thing in Canada. Yeah, uh, we, fair. I mean, it's fair. We had this conversation earlier that you know we don't have Hulu. But we have Star in Disney Plus, which seems to offer a lot of the stuff that's on Hulu. So they've rolled it into Disney Plus, which is actually that was that's a case where we actually got a benefit there. But there's a lot of times where they'll offer things like these tiers and stuff, but we never see it in Canada. Now, yeah, I mean, the other part of this too, though, is you know some of these ones like and they and they mention it in here like uh, some of the some of the ad uh, tiers also don't give you like hd which like if i don't have hd like I, i'd have a problem with that too like i i i'd rather pay more and be able you know get 4k wait, wait, I, content yeah so you need 4k content hd i don't need enough? 4k hd's fine but i want like standard definition i don't want like you know but i think for people that only going to watch on a phone yeah yeah that probably fine. doesn't matter right yeah 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 listen right, I, I think we, it's we a gotta good talk option. about teeth man we gotta talk about it right, let's your teeth all Let's right. skip past Dr. all that because, right? Listen, if you're not if you're not talking about Doctor Teeth, you're just not talking. Um, all right, do you want to so, do you want to say what this is? What new Disney talking? Plus show, Doctor Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Okay, like that's that's what that's what we got here. Like, I don't know if there needs to be anything else said. Like this, this is this, this is going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, basically uh, they're doing. It's a new show uh, from the guy that created the Goldbergs, which is a show which I is huge. Watched. Yeah, it's a huge show, but I haven't watched it. Are you? All right, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I just have, I just haven't watched it, and and also starring Canadian Lily Singh. Look at that! So you got a Canadian in there. Yeah, uh, he's, I, yeah no. I, I no, actually that, don't the, the, know yeah. who that is. I don't oh know my who that is. Oh, Lily Singh. Guys are just. Hold on, I, I might, I might recognize. Hold on, let me look her up because you, you, unless you're going to either know her right away, you, anything you look up is not going to all of a sudden um, make you know her. She looks familiar. She's on YouTube. She's a huge YouTuber. Huge. She's now transitioned oh, okay. well, into other things. Okay. See, I yeah, I I hmm. kind of vaguely recognize her, but I I mean, I don't really. I'm not into YouTubers. I you know, I'm just. So you know who she is, though, Damon. Are you saying you don't like her, or? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. So that that's kind of a a negative to for you. That's on a, this that's one? a that's a negative on this one, but it's it's Doctor Teeth. So like, yeah, and dude, Goldberg's yeah, what was a super good show that is now just trudging along on a broken leg, unfortunately, to the end. But um, in the beginning, was very good. This is going to be good, even with. You know, I, I think it's going to be good. I just think it's going to be really good because it's it's Doctor Teeth. Like, yeah, it's about time Doctor Teeth and the Electric Mayhem got some love, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so this this will definitely be uh, a fun show. I feel like, yeah, and this is going to be a Disney Plus show, and it and it looks like it's going to follow the uh, what's well, it says the Muppets Mayhem is what it's, it's called. Will follow as Doctor Teeth and the band attempt to record its first first proper album under the guidance of Nora, who's played by Lily Singh, a young A and R executive. Um, you know, of course, the show is going to be Muppet Studio and uh, Wait, gonna be so Disney could, Plus. could this be the new rock and roller coaster? Oh man, that would be so cool! That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so Muppets you- roller coaster? Yes. Wow. Yes. I am 100% <laughs> behind you on this one, Damon. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, just, it, it feels very much something that could be squeezed in there, I feel like. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> the opening show, like like the the yeah. part with Aerosmith, yeah. yeah, that could totally be Muppets. Because think about it. If you do that, you, you almost don't have to spend as much money because it's the Muppets. <laughs> well, you own it already. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. anything, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, you still got to get people to, to voice stuff. I mean... <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, but you're not spending like that ridiculous money, and, and it would stay forever. I feel like I don't know. It was just yeah. a thought. I, once I saw that, I was like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that's wonder, that is so, actually far more timeless than Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, which I uh, like, by the way. But this would be pretty cool. I wonder who they're gonna like. I want. I'm assuming they're gonna do like original songs in this, like, and and you know where that's gonna come from. I I'll be interested to see that too. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe. Yeah. Cuz I mean, there's they've done some stuff recently of them doing like covers, like that you yeah, know, they, yeah. where they post them on like Facebook doing covers and stuff. But like I so feel can like you if you name all the people in the band? I cannot. No. I can't either, and that's disappointing. I I thought you were going to c- come here and bust out all the names from the Electric Mayhem. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but still, I'm I'm excited for this one. I do feel like it's a really uh, underrated part of the Muppets, right? Like they don't show up enough. Well, it's Animal. So, I mean, is Animal really underrated? Well, no. Everybody besides Animal. He's, I mean, yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he's the he's the iconic part of the Electric Mayhem. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like he's like the breakout star of the Electric Mayhem. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Went on to do solo drum albums. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. I would love to. I'm like. I'm just thinking of like what who I would want to like do like the music for this. You know what I mean? Like, could you do like somebody like the Foo Fighters or like, or, well, and and uh, they did a thing in that one Muppet movie too, where there was, uh, wasn't Dave Grohl Animal at one point? Or was it Jack Black? Yeah, Jack Black was part of that too. I'm trying to remember from that, from that more recent Muppet movie. <laughs> I'm just saying they could get somebody cool to write the music for this. That would kind of fit into it. So, yeah, I mean, well. Yeah, there, there's about 50 different ways that they could go with this, right? Yes. Yeah. They just have, have had a lot of success lately with, like, you know, you know, a lot of the the, the people that they've been collaborating with and, and doing really well, and uh, you know, with having music being being very uh, very popular music, like in Kanto and you know, and all that stuff. So, anyway, uh, anything else about this, Damon? No, no. no you're just excited for the show. I'm excited for the show. No, nope, no word Muppets. on when this is coming out. By the way, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, Trevor. Yeah, any Muppets is better than no Muppets. Absolutely. I I'm happy that they're continuing to find things to do with the Muppets. So, and I, I really did enjoy Muppets Haunt- Haunted Mansion. I I thought that was uh, that was a good use. So, is it a cost thing though? What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, are the Muppets making a big comeback? Like you said, because of cost. Like they're ch- you think they're cheaper to do or like? Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of. I mean, I don't know, because, I mean, you have a lot of people involved with those productions, right? Like, I watched a behind-the-scenes thing on that uh, that talk show that they did, uh, that the, you know, which one, mm-hmm. what was it? Um, yeah, yeah. Earth to Ned? Yeah. And mm-hmm. that looks like a really complicated production. I mean, just the one puppet was like six people were operating it at <laughs> once, you know? Like, that's, that's a lot of work. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's not Will Smith money, right? Like, it's not like well, yeah. paying Will Smith to come in. Yeah, it's not like when they did like the Avengers Infinity War and they had to pay Robert Downey Jr. twenty million and Chris Evans another twenty million. Yeah, it's it's definitely a little yeah, bit you, easier. Yeah. You you can you, you you don't have the option to replace Robert Downey Jr.'s arm if it's not working. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm excited that I really am excited for this. So I, I hope it's like really funny and like really bizarre and you know, just typical Muppets, but did you guys watch Muppets Haunted Mansion? Or am I the only one that watched that? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I watched it. Yeah. yeah, it was it was good. I mean, yeah, the, I like, like yeah. it, it. I think the problem I have right now with Muppets is that I, I get excited about it and I try to bring my kid in and he watches it and goes, that was dumb. <laughs> because, oh, really? Yeah. Well, one, he's a teenager. Two, yeah. yeah. Um, a, he tough. he didn't he didn't grow up with it like I did. Like when I was a kid, yeah. it was, you know. Uh, Muppet Show and all that was on TV a lot. 
So I, I had that understanding for him. He never, that wasn't a thing when he was growing up. So, you know, I tried to get him into it and he's like, what is this? <laughs> but I feel like was the Muppet show even your time? Um, it, so uh, there was a lot of reruns on TV. <laughs> <laughs> in Canada. Okay. Yeah, it was it was on TV a lot. Like they they, they showed like I, I know I know a lot of the episodes aired in like the 70s and stuff, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in the 80s and it uh you know, they definitely had uh it was still running by then. Yeah, see, I, I just feel like it's like it's like Fraggle Rock, man. Fraggle Rock is such a good show, but my kids were never interested and that's very disappointing. Yeah. We we tried that too and yeah, my my son Fraggle Rock had is no awesome. Interest. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I kind of grew up on like Muppet Babies, like the animated show, right? Like that was probably my access initially when I was a kid. Wait, wait, hold on. Trevor, you're That's older like than 90s. Tom? Yeah, it was, 90, it was yeah. 90s, yeah. Wait, Trevor, are you older than Tom? I'm yeah. pretty sure I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... I'm just the baby of the bunch? Uh, apparently, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, That's I, okay. I, I, have, I, mean, I have a lot of 80s. I mean, hence the Knight Rider meme that I... I saw on the group that i shook my head at that i said that last week <laughs> yeah oh man uh no yeah no that's that's what i, I mean and it's funny now because the you know muppet I babies mean, they like redid it and now my my daughter watches the new muppet babies all the time i feel like should we have like professional headshots for our memes now i mean i do kind of they keep reusing like screen grabs they're getting off of our from, youtube from lives. A live show yeah. we did like two years ago <laughs> yeah and they look terrible like i i yeah. almost want to give them like a better picture i feel like i feel like i want to like you know green screen jeffrey's head for them so they have like options like you know here here's a ping file with no background go to go to work man well i do find it funny depending on who makes the meme that some of them you know actually like try to remove the corners off the edge of the picture and some just take a take a screen grab and just you know well francisco went both ways this week he did yeah he did yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I i would love to provide them with a better picture cuz uh, i they keep using that the same terrible pictures of us so Someone's going to sneak a picture of you if you show up to the meetup and then, uh, <laughs> I'm not going unless there's paddlefish and Tom is, Tom is severely lacking on setting this up. I'm just not letting that. everybody I'm just, know. I just can't decide what I want to do. So, <laughs> uh, right. AKA severely lacking. <laughs> yeah, I know. I listen, I know I, I want to do, so I, I want to do the lunchtime hour, but we, you know, we have some people coming in and I don't want to like, we initially said seven o'clock at night and if we, we change, change to, our mind. I, that's true. It's true. I just don't want I mean, anybody that made listen. So, so here's the show instead of the group. If you're coming in and you're going to miss a lunchtime one and you're really, really that bent about it, send Tom an email. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, we, we think we're probably going to do paddlefish from like 1230 to 330. And then after that, we'll, you know, if we want to hang around Disney Springs or go to Epcot and do some food and wine or I whatever. Have tickets. I can't go to Epcot. We're going to get you Epcot. tickets. We'll get you. We're going to Epcot. Epcot. <laughs> Epcot's happening. We'll get you okay. tickets, Damon. It's okay. Yeah, we can do it. We can fine. make it happen. <laughs> so, Damon, yeah. take a deep breath. We're going to Epcot. <laughs> so, if anybody's listening to this right now and is planning to come into the meetup, and twelve thirty to three thirty is not going to work for you, let me know as soon as possible. But that's basically what the plan is going to be. We're going to go to Paddlefish. We're going to do twelve thirty to three thirty. That's with what food. we're going to do. Yeah, with food. Yes. It. Yes, with food. So that Jeremy's anyway. not coming though. So he's going to be upset because like we're doing it going all out. I feel like Tom, maybe is trying to throw him off the scent. I'm just saying, is that what it is? Yeah. Just trying to, I mean, you know, I mean, he's not sending me maple syrup. Maybe, you know, maybe if he sent me some maple syrup, then I'd be a little bit uh, cooler about it. So well, it's not like he's sending me free maple syrup. <laughs> I want to. That would be a different story. I'm excited for a review of this maple syrup because Jeremy's really talked this maple syrup up quite a bit behind the scenes, and so I need to know I mean, how good this is going to be. I don't think that like I'm going to have to like have everyone in the house try. I don't think my taste is still 100 percent back. I'll be honest with you. Oh really? Yeah. So I, I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, I guess this will be a good a good uh, barometer of that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like that into maple syrup. Like Jeremy was saying that like you're supposed to like drink a shot of it. Like I, I it's what? not it's not elf. Like I'm not drinking like I'm not putting maple syrup on my spaghetti. Like that's not happening. It's going on some pancakes. <laughs> I, I put it like I'm a light maple syrup person, just like I'm a light sauce on my spaghetti person, right? Like I don't drown it. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see who's goes. who's taking shots of maple syrup? Do you even do that in Canada, Trevor? Like <laughs> um, 
maybe Eastern Canada that I've never heard of that out here, <laughs> but we don't like, yeah, we're, we're not a huge maple syrup province. That's okay. yeah. It's just, that's just weird. I mean, I'm with you. Like we don't even, I think I use syrup maybe like once a month, like once a month, maybe. Oh, so we either have pancakes or waffles pretty much every Sunday. Okay. Um, See, Sundays is okay, bagels so this, for us. We're so this, bagels so, Sunday, so, you know. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read exactly what he wrote me. When you crack a fresh jug, half fill a shot glass for each person who wants to try it, and then just sip off it together. That's the tradition for the good stuff. Okay, that's worded very inappropriately, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I'm he's saying to sip it. Glass of maple syrup. I want you to sip it though. Is you got you got to sip it like a fine wine, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll I'll sometimes put it in my Tim Hortons coffee because that's like oh, the most you Canadian. just made Jeremy really mad though. That sounds good that. though. That's that's good. the most You're, Canadian thing you can do. You know, maple syrup in a Tim Hortons. But, yeah, but uh, I don't think this sort of level of maple syrup. That's like well, your you know grocery store maple syrup. No, I, I have some nice maple syrup that I put in my coffee from time to time. So. Okay, I'm not gonna argue with you. I feel like coffee kills the flavor of everything, so I don't know. Uh, no, no. I I, give yeah. good maple syrup though. Good maple syrup yeah. is very full flavored. I feel like you could really, you know, you could do a lot with that. You're supposed to be sipping it out of a shot glass. You're not supposed to be. It's not a mixer, oh. Trevor. It's not a mixer. Right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I I guess I, I don't drink alcohol to begin with, so I I don't have any of the uh, you know shot glasses or anything to to satisfy this requirement. <laughs> Uh, that's really funny. Can I put some in a tumbler? Is that okay? No, I, I guess no. <laughs> that's not allowed. <laughs> that that tumbler is growing on me more and more, though. Like I was like, eh, when I first you know saw it, now like I like it actually. I don't even the have welcome one. home tumbler. I know you had to send yours out for my big mouth. I feel like, yeah, it was kind of that's kind of the reason. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Damon might have promised a, a tumbler to somebody that uh, we didn't account for. We didn't for. have <laughs> enough tumblers for. <laughs> so I just sent them mine because uh, you know. Anyway, uh, so where were we? What were we even talking? I don't even know what, what's going on. We, we are on character the meet and greets. Experience. I feel like we were at. Yeah. We're at no, character yeah. meet. Okay, we were at we're the Epcot experience. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, nothing to talk about there, honestly. Yeah, I ah, agree. Dude, have yeah. you guys done it? It was amazing. No, it was so when, cool. When would I have done it? That's true. <laughs> like yeah, two years. that's true. <laughs> Started in 2019. Yeah, it's, yeah that's true. I, I can't miss anything that I didn't do. It's a fair point, but it was amazing, and I am interested to see what they're going to put in there next because it was very cool, like the way they did projections and the room changed, and it was very cool. All right, so all right, so Damon, you want to talk about what you want to talk about? Character meet and greets coming back? Is that what you want to? Just... I don't know. I don't. I don't I, the rest of this stuff is just a little irrelevant to me. <laughs> My kids are too old for meet and greets. I'm not the sort of person that needs um, pictures now anymore. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like twelve is kind of like. Eh. I mean, listen, I know adults get them, and that's cool. But I kind of and I and it was funny when when we were at the parks and we would have to break off for whatever reason. Like, hey, I gotta go. You know, they, they're going to eat, and I'm doing. I don't know whatever I would else I would be doing. I don't know what I'd be doing to be honest with you. But I sometimes I'd find myself by myself, and one of the things that I would always do is whenever I was by myself, I'd get like fifty pictures right with all the photo pass people. So that like yeah. when the photo passes came in, they were like, what the heck? Where were you? What did <laughs> you get? Of that? pictures by yourself. <laughs> I, Tons I, of pictures by amazing. myself. Yeah. I did that in 2019 as well. My my, my yeah. wife and my son went somewhere. We, we were in Toy Story Land and I, and I saw a photo pass person. And so I just got a bunch of pictures done. And yes. then we're going through the pictures and my wife's like, when did this happen? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, outside of that, I really don't have a huge interest in meet and greets anymore. Um, But hey. <laughs> what about yeah I mean, you know i i get it but you know like for from my family's point of view like my son my son is not big on meet and greets except for stitch stitch is like his all-time favorite character and every time we've gone he's like where you know are we either going to ohana or are we going somewhere to meet stitch like it's for yeah. him that's a specific thing so you know for for this coming back like he you know, hopefully with us going in, in November, we'll be able to find Stitch somewhere. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm like you, I'm like most of the time I'm not, I don't need to stop and see like Chippendale or anything like that. But I, I definitely like, it's a very, um, it's a very specific thing. Like, and it doesn't have to be all or nothing, which I think is kind of nice. Yeah. 
So by the way, what we're referencing here is the is Disney CFO uh, spoke at a conference and said that meet and greets should be coming back soon. That's all. That's all she said is that they would be coming back soon. But I did I did think it was interesting. She mentioned it in the in the context of park capacity, where you know, she said, "I mean, they're just things that you load balance the park be- that load balance the park better." So. When you get all those things back on, and they should be all coming back on this year, but they're not back yet. Like they're just those people oh, yeah. eat up; those, pe- those things eat up people. You know, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would agree with you. I think that there's just they. It's, it's good for the people that don't want to do them. To be honest with you, sure. As yeah. well as the people yeah. that want to do them, because I think it's a benefit to both. Right? You want them back? Great, good. You take your pictures. I don't, and that's good for me because now you're somewhere else. I'm just looking at this Tron cycle and just saying, man, this has got to hurt a lot of people's back. <laughs> This thing. <laughs> what riding on it like a motorcycle like that well the, the not only the, that but like i'm looking at the these dummies that comes down <laughs> yeah. yeah that thing in the back like man like i don't know i think this is gonna be wrecking a lot of backs like those dummies look like they're super uncomfortable <laughs> the dummies look uncomfortable <laughs> they do and that's that's saying a lot these dummies actually look really <laughs> uncomfortable face <laughs> down <laughs> yeah, exactly little, little, uh... terrible they look a little depressed to be on Tron. They they should draw some little happy faces or put Google little smiley faces on them. <laughs> I do I do love uh, Damon like commiserating with the the detesting dummies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really do feel bad for them. I, I I just looked at that and was like, man, their backs look like they're messed up. <laughs> I think it'll be. I think it'll be okay, though. Like, I mean, they're not going to put you. I mean, I'm the, sure it's going to be fine. But yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, you know, but I mean, like, I'm not super comfortable. Like, even on like flight of passage, I don't find to be the most comfortable position I've ever been in in my life. Because <laughs> like, it, it's again, it's that motorbike like yeah. leaning forward position. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not all that dissimilar from what this position is, right? It's it's pretty similar. Uh, so yeah, I, and it's it is interesting how the restraints work on this, where they kind of like lower down on your back like that. You know, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I, I I keep watching the beginning of this video, and I keep looking at more and more of the the test dummies, and it gets <laughs> worse. <Just> over. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, somebody should screen cap our face. Uh, you know, our, our faces onto the uh, dummies. <laughs> Tom, what did they say? Once you start talking about memes, they don't happen. Don't ruin all. No, the that's stuff. true. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I, that's how you break the magic. You, I can't yeah, help exactly. it if I get ideas. I can't help it if I get ideas, and I need to share them. Maybe you should have a burner account for memes. Uh, okay, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, go ahead, Trevor. What were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I was going to say, memes are like Fight Club. Like, you don't yeah, talk, talk about, about Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a burner account for memes. I'm just going to come up. Uh, I'm going to, like, combine, uh, like, Jeremy's name, Francisco's name. Who else does memes? <laughs> Jeremy and Francisco, primarily. Right? Your name would be Frank. Frank. Frank Jeremy. Frank Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you're thinking what i'm thinking right yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> oh that's pretty great <laughs> uh you can tell we're getting to the end of this thing because they're just yeah, this... silly <laughs> uh i mean listen this is a good step for for tron i mean i don't know what this means as far as when it's going to open i mean um, this might be the only ride that like i go oh okay i'm kind of interested in this yeah, you know, even even with or, the uh, uncomfortable looking or, dummies or, on it, or, I mean, I have, <laughs> David will back, be looking my, just my as back sad. is fine, so I'm okay. But I'm, I'm just thinking about other people. I could oh, just good. see it cracking your back a little bit, you know, maybe being like a little therapeutic, you know, just kind of stretching. No, I bit. feel like it's going to be more like, oh, my back's in that position for over a minute. That's not good. <laughs> and people coming <laughs> off like walking all hobbly. Yeah, I could see. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> to be f- a lot of people come off Space Mountain though with like hurt necks and and such though too. I mean, so mm-hmm. like. I, I I mean I haven't come off their sword, but I I mean I usually my back is usually to be on good. It to be, yeah. That's why we're going to go to Magic Kingdom so we can you know prove this once and for all. So we're going to Epcot. We're doing both. Going, yeah. Not, <laughs> Not the same one day. night. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, I won't be there for Magic Kingdom, so. Well, no, I, I'll, I think, I'll record it. Yeah, It'll be I, fine. I think we'll do I think we'll do Epcot on uh, the Saturday and then Magic Kingdom on Sunday. I think that's what the plan is going to be. So, okay. I think Corinne was asking about that on uh, on Discord, so. I don't know if, if she's coming or not. I don't. But she was asking what days we were doing what. So yep. we should probably put that out there as soon as possible. So there you go. <laughs> Epcot Saturday. So, yeah. Yeah. Here's the plan, folks. We're, we're going to Epcot and then we're going to go over to Disney Springs and do Paddlefish and meet all you guys. And then we're going to go back to Epcot. And, Hang out till and, close. Yeah. Yep. And then and then Sunday, we're going to go to Magic Kingdom. And, and ride some stuff. Yeah. Whatever happens from that. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, we'll, 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 I don't know if we'll rope drop. I mean, you know, we'll see if we can no, no, no. rope drop. Yeah, but I'm, we'll, I'm, we'll go first to Space Mountain and then we'll do things from there. <laughs> so, and, and actually, so I, I was going to talk about it on this episode, but I think maybe, um, uh, n- not next week because I know we have we have Ziggy on, but I actually have a friend that he he messaged me this week. Like he was on the the boat going over to Magic Kingdom. He's like, "Hey, guess where I am?" And then I'm like, "Cool, you know what are you doing?" And he's like, "I have no idea. Um, I've never been here before." Oh, God. and I literally I literally planned his day for him over Facebook chat wow. and that's like pretty, told him what to impressive. do. But but I'll. Uh, I'll I, I I actually need to follow up with them and, and find out how the day went, but I want to talk about it because it's kind of going to kind of play into, I think what we're going to do for the meetup is we, you know, yeah. we're not going to have a plan, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. <laughs> I, uh, you just, you're just making me think of like, uh, what was it? Spider-Man where they, the most recent Spider-Man's where the, uh, his, his friend was like, uh, I'm going to be the guy on the computer. The guy in the chair. <laughs> yeah. The guy in yeah. the chair. Yeah. The guy yeah. in the chair with the computer, you know, telling you what to do. Yeah. Like that was you, you were just sitting there like texting. That was like, me. And you, he's like, Oh, I'm going to go to, to seven dwarves right now and just wait standby. I, you're like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I was literally, um, I, I was in between meetings and i was like grabbing the map of uh of the park and like drawing directions for him like go here go here <laughs> that's i yeah. did that with my sister a while ago when i because i had the touring plans you know the lines app that they had this is before genie and uh you know and she was like oh i'm gonna go to uh you know smugglers run i'm like no don't do that right now too long wait a half hour you'll be good like and so and everything i told i just was over text just being like trying to direct her from place to place just based on what the lines app was saying from touring plans. And, uh, that worked out pretty well. So, <laughs> all right, just, just a couple more things I found interesting from the CFO, by the way, so, like comment wise. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting. She said, you know, and, and this is true. Like, you know, Disney doesn't typically, and I also don't love the ad thing for my kid. Like, you know, I, I don't love my kids seeing ads all the time. And so they're going to have to be like really careful about how they do ads on, on Disney plus. And so they're, they're, they're saying that they're saying that, right. That they're going to be very careful about, uh, for the family audience, like what the ads are going to be. Um, but you know, for me, I'm not going to pay for the ad one anyway, I'll pay for the ad free one. So I don't really care that much about it, but I, I just hadn't thought about that until, you know, I just saw them. Oh, ad tier. Great. And then, and then it was like, oh wait, but they're going to be advertising to a lot of kids and families. Like that's going to look a little bit different, you know? Yeah. That's, you bring up actually a really good point. You, you just reminded me of, uh, so um, personal experience with that. There was uh, uh, a kids channel up here uh, or YTV for, for anyone that knows it. Um, the, so when my son was younger, you know, he would, he would watch it. Cause we, back when we had cable and there was a, a point where they were um, there was a show on, and this was when uh, there, there was a game called five nights at Freddy's came out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it was really popular, but my son was scared of the game and, and not because he had played it or anything, but because, um, you know, it's, it's a jump scare type game and, and all the kids at school have been talking about. It. And so he was freaked out about it and, and they kept running these ads where they were like, you know, on the next episode, you know, we're, you know, we're going to play five nights at Freddy's and we're going to do this. And, and, you know, they were showing just little bits and pieces of it, like, like not enough that it was scary, but it was enough that it was freaking my son out and like we would have to <laughs> change the channel because you know we didn't want him getting worked up about it but yeah it's like you said it's you don't really think about that stuff and, and i know like it was very specific to you know just an experience for him but yeah you know you know kids and ads especially on something like disney plus um they got to be real careful about that because there there is definitely Absolutely. a lot of different age groups that uh may not want to see what you think they should be seeing. <laughs> well, and there's there's a lot of laws and stuff around that too, right? Like so they, they have to yeah. be pretty careful about what they're going to do there. So um I also saw this Genie Plus thing and it actually this actually kind of made me think of Damon cuz the the CFO said uh talking about Genie Plus said uh um she said so those things people can decide whether or not how they want to uh, how they want to spend on these but those have also lent to a better experience for people trying to maximize the day and and some people look some people have more time than they do money and some people have more money than they do time and i don't know why that just made me think of damon cuz i feel like <laughs> i just... i agree with that though i, I, I agree that... with that thought too yeah cuz it's 
that's what Genie Plus is all about, right? That's is is your time worth you know paying your money? Your money? Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. That's the equation that, that, you have to do. Exactly. Yeah. That that is. Th- she does understand what the equation is. Is yeah. Do I do I want to spend my time or my money on this? Exactly. And that's and that's you know I, I've been talking about. We've been saying this forever. Like that's really what it is. That's what they're saying to you. Is that um you know. Is do you want to spend money to spend less time, or, or do you, or do you want to not spend money and then spend more time in line? Like that's that's what the equation is. So, all right. So, and then also, I thought it was interesting too. She's talking about how they're basically saying they're they're never going to get back to full capacity again because they uh, and and you know I've said this for a while too, and I, I think you know we've talked about this before that the Disney does not want the parks to be super super busy. Like that is not something they want. Believe it or not. Because they figured out in the past, and and they actually, I mean, they say this right here. We don't want the parks. Uh, this is a quote. We don't want to have the parks bursting at the seams. We want to have them so that they are a great experience when you're there. And if you're having a good time, you're probably inclined to spend more money. And that has been our results that we've had to date since we've reopened. So, and they've said that before. They it, when people are happier and they're having a better time, they tend to spend more money. And though they also tend to want to come back too, right? So this is the thing they said too. So we're managing the business differently. Um, you know, when you're a guest in the park and you can't do and it, do, do things and everything is too crowded, your guest experience is going to go down and your intent to return is going to go down and word of mouth will not be good. Right. And like, that's uh, makes yeah. total sense to me. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a cascading effect. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that, that, that one bad day for one person can actually mean 10 people not coming back to the park. So yeah. Is it, is it better to get more people in today or have more people over the long term coming. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And you know, she also just kind of talks to about the park reservation system and why they're doing it. Um, you know, how initially they needed it, but then she said, but then when we saw we, uh that we could actually use this even when the restrictions were lifted uh and that we know how many people are going to be in a park on a given day, um and you know, it allows them to better balance load throughout the year and then, you know, they they that's with and manage the attendance yeah, like- better. Yeah, that that's, you know, data analytics, right? Like that's exactly. that's the dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. of the attractions which are great for capacity management are things like nighttime attractions, the parades. When those things happen, people are on rides and they're also watching a nighttime spectacular. So like, again, like this is part of it, too, right? Capacity is not just like how many people they let in the park. They need to have everything reopened so that because we talk, we say all the time, people eaters, right? They need all these, the meet and greets, the parades. Those things all take away from the standby lines of other rides, right? Like that's those are things that take up people's time that those people are not in line for other things. And it's so it, it once, you know, all those things opening is is a benefit to everybody. So So I think I think right. that's it. I think that's it for this week. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think, have anything uh, else. Yeah, I think that's that works out perfectly. And uh yeah. Um we can probably close this off now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and wrap us up. All right. Cool. Um, as usual, if you guys uh, would like to send us uh, any emails, you can always find us at welcome home podcast at gmail.com. Uh, keep the listener questions coming, uh, share your experiences with the parks. Um, you know, we love hearing your guys' thoughts on DVC, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, you know, you can always find us there. Uh, if you want to find us on Facebook, uh, look us up as Welcome Home Podcast, and you can also check out our Facebook group, the Welcome Home Disney Waitlist. Um, and that uh, that group is where you know a lot of what we were talking about earlier with uh, you know some of our listeners and memes and um, you know just conversation uh, about the podcast and about Disney and everything. Uh, that is the place to go for it. So if you're interested in that, please consider joining the group. We'd love to have you. And uh, if you want to follow us on YouTube, you can go to Welcome Home Podcast or Instagram as Welcome Home Picks. Uh, with the meetup coming, uh, you'll be, you know, those are good things to be subscribed to because you'll be able to catch stuff that we're doing in the parks or at the meetup and, you know, pictures and videos and all that kind of stuff. And if you uh, want to help support the podcast, make sure you go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and uh, consider picking up some merchandise because that, uh, that's actually helping us keep the podcast running and it's helping us do things like, uh, um, like how we did the, the limited run of the haunted river country t-shirt last year. Um, these, uh, 
the, uh, money from f- from the store helps us fund some of these projects that we're wanting to do, and we have more coming that we've been talking about. So, um, yeah, consider consider getting some merch with uh, from there, or if you want to support us through Patreon, go to patreon.com slash welcome home pod. And uh, we have a couple of different tiers there and it's exclusive merchandise on Patreon. So it's, it's a logo that we designed uh, for Patreon and uh, that'll also get you access to the discord server, which is yet another way that you guys can interact with us. If you happen to like discord and want to have conversations with us there. Last but not least, make sure you guys go to uh, iTunes or Spotify, whatever you're listening to us on and uh, leave us a five-star rating because that helps more people find the podcast and it makes Tom happy. So if you want, if you want Tom to smile today, make sure you leave a five-star review. If if, if you're not just remember, Tom's not smiling and you should feel bad about that. I'm just always sad sitting somewhere with my head in my hands. And then exactly when I tell him until he hears that five-star ding go off there, he has it programmed. So there's a little ding that goes special ringtone special. And and then, yeah. Yeah. And then Tom smiles. So, so make sure you, uh, make sure you do that for Tom guys. Yeah. If, and if it's less than a five star, <laughs> I get even sadder. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't actually, we, we, we've actually, uh, we haven't had a review in a little while. So if you haven't reviewed the show, please do so. We would really appreciate it. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any podcast app that's out there. Search for Welcome Home. Look for the one that's Disney and DVC. I think these days we show up first anyway in most places. So uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company. And as such, all opinions we express on the show are our own. So please consult your DVC representative or Disney cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Huge thank you to DVC Rental Store for sponsoring this episode. And of course, World of DVC for being our continued sponsor. Uh, so please check them out if you need to rent out your DVC points. If you want to try to rent some DVC points and check them out, uh, you know, check out DVC for yourself before you buy. I think that's a great thing to do. So join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion. Of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is no man's affair.